Mikey Z, how's it going? Uh, dude, it's been a minute. It has been a couple years. It, yeah, yeah. Last time uh, we sat down for a conversation, we were both in small spaces. Yep. Making the most of that. You've expanded. I've expanded. We're shooting in my studio, um, located in Queen Creek now. You're in Apache Junction in a new space. Yep. I think you had mentioned 1,700 square feet yep, or so. 1,700 square feet. That's right. About That's a bit, times. a bit above the 500 that you were in. Yeah, yeah. Which is solid. Uh, brought on a new guy. Yes. Yep. Tell me about that. How was how was the expansion? Because you were last time we talked, it was one or two employees. One on the production side, and then the guy that does all of our marketing. Well, and I think yeah, that's right. You had basically said three in total, you included. Right. Um, right. So now you're at what total? Four then? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would consider four full team members. Actually, just today I had a conversation with uh, Ben, who is the employee that's been here since um, about a year and a half. Okay. So. Um, his fiance is actually going to take over some of our customer service. Awesome. So adding a fifth. Nice. But, but cool. yeah, so when we, when we last talked, I had one on the production side mm-hmm. and then the marketing guy, uh, Wesley has been working with me since 2019, I guess. Yeah. Um, but that production employee, he moved on to a different thing. Okay. Um, and then Ben, who I knew from way back to my childhood mm-hmm. from Ohio, uh, chose to come out here and work for the company, and now his brother, as of July, uh, is with us on the production side as well. So That's it's awesome. me, Ben, and Nate number two. His nice, name is nice. Uh, all on the production side, and then Wesley still bringing in the uh, the orders on the digital advertising side. So. Yeah, which you guys are crushing it. I saw there's a there's a kind of a, a, a limited edition drop coming up here yeah yeah tomorrow so morning yeah it'll be well sold out hopefully by the yeah. time this yeah yeah goes yeah out. yeah that's awesome uh, the last couple the last couple we call them ready to ship drops because most of our stuff is made to order because it's custom built right thread color leather color monogram all that yeah so these ready to ship drops we try to use a leather that's really unique and uh we just drop them on the website and the last couple Last few have sold out in like under eight minutes. I think Jeez. the longest one took eight minutes. So uh, we'll see. The, the ones tomorrow, though, they're from uh, a leather called Shell Cordovan, which is this really uh, expensive, uh, highly sought after, yeah. really cool leather. And um, we'll see We'll see how quickly they, they go because um, some of them are going to be running 325 a piece yeah and, nice uh, they're they're high-end pieces but man they're they're beautiful and so. and are those pieces from like the the kind of like selection that you normally offer so i know you've got kind yeah. of your staples but is, it, is that basically it or are you doing like custom custom builds for the limited drops no, that we, are what they are we try to do the the top sellers mainly nice um and then we'll throw in a few because every drop somebody complains that we didn't make this particular model so we try sure. to make like one of most yeah things so but uh yeah there are best sellers for the most part so um yeah i've never even i'm thinking now about doing like a custom we could do a custom run of a of a different model yeah i mean I, the way i the way i see it too is you probably have and I don't, i'm sure in your system you probably could go through like your your online store catalog and see like previous customers but how many i mean this is just me guessing but i I would assume because of the unique drops that you do every once in a while like how many people are starting to like collect lost dutchman stuff quite a few yeah that's quite a few that's pretty cool there's people that uh collect lost dutchman stuff but the most for the most part they're people that collect leather goods in general yeah so um and some specifically shell cordovan this yeah. leather that we're dropping tomorrow very cool so yeah there's some collectors out there i mean we see the same names pop up in a lot of these drops yeah that's like, cool and some of them are grabbing as many as they can yeah yeah before they sell out yeah it's pretty cool that's pretty badass and i mean last time i remember we had mentioned you're getting stuff from all over the world so i'm sure that that's still on the up and up as well yep yep international orders are still a, a massive part of uh of our revenue and and that's mainly because of digital advertising i mean yeah. you can reach literally anyone anywhere yeah. with an ad yeah which on a consumer side is like a little bit annoying and sure. scary yeah but as someone who's trying to sell something and do business the right way right it's like you're getting offered all this crap yeah and 
Facebook might be spying on you, but at least here's one really nice thing that right. we actually, it's not a scam, you know, there's customer service to back it up, but right. we're trying to be the good ads out there. I mean, dude, it looks like you're running a pretty clean operation all around. We're trying. The new space looks stellar. I'm, I'm excited to kind of tour that space. Yeah. You, uh, it, I mean, when I originally reached out for the first podcast episode we did, which it's crazy to think that that was two years ago, um, it was over a cup of coffee. I was sitting in my office and just kind of like shooting the shit in the morning, scrolling Instagram. Yeah. And saw basically you doing the same thing. Yeah. And you posted that. I remember that, yeah. And it was legitimately one of those moments where I was just like, I'm going to reach out. I'm going to see what we can do. Because yeah. the creative side with you, it's it's creative people that kind of make me want to do this. So from that perspective, it was like, well, I'm sure he's in 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 the, in the mood to do it. Yeah, so, yeah. And I remember you were you were looking for podcasts, which it was just kind of serendipitous. Yeah, I just, felt, that, I just felt like I had learned so. And at that, like looking back, I didn't really have anything that valuable to say. But uh, I just had felt like I disagree. I thought that was a great. I episode. felt like I had learned a lot and just wanted to like I don't know. I wanted to talk about it. Yeah. And it's like business people as creative people, if you don't have other business. And creative people to yeah. talk to, yeah. it's kind of you like kind of want to let that let yeah. that out because yeah. business to me is as fun as the leather crafting itself. This sure. is what I've learned about myself the past few years is I'm almost as passionate about business yeah. as I am about um, like our products and the hobby that you know what ten years ago was a hobby, right? Um, so. To be able to talk, just like I would talk somebody's ear off about leather working. Sure. I like to talk about business. I like to talk about creativity. So and a podcast was a cool way to do it. Yeah. And then you you popped in my DMs. So. Yeah. Well, and this is this is kind of, you know, an extension of that. So, I mean, to, to anybody listening or watching, like, that's basically the idea is as a businessman running a business and trying to do a personal, bo- a personal podcast that, you know, it's anybody who does it. Anybody who's produced one, it's it's a fair amount of work, especially yeah. if you want to do it right. And I set unrealistic expectations the first time that I tried to step into it. I'm fully willing to admit that to the internet. Um, I tried to set this goal of doing an episode every week. Yeah, yeah. And if you're trying to have a full-time job and have a girlfriend, a spouse, uh, you know, a life. We, you know, I, I I got married this year. I have a baby. She's beautiful. My life is wonderful. But when you try and put this on top of that on a weekly basis, on top of a full time job, that's a lot. It's a lot, dude. Yeah. And it's hard to it's hard to balance. So that's where this comes in, and and this format's going to be really cool because not only are we in the studio, but we're going to have the time to kind of walk around your studio space and share that. Um, so that's kind of where this is now turning. Is it's a interview series more so than a podcast to me to where it's us sitting down and talking about really just catching up because i think of you as a homie Uh, so catching up over you know what what we've both done over the past two years and then kind of share the space you've been kind of in in my studio for a minute now and looking around and you know it's definitely quite a bit more elaborate than the first time we we did this in my home office basically so I mean, same thing for you coming from 500 square feet. Now you're in 1700 with a couple more employees. Business is booming. Things are doing well. How does it feel to kind of make some progress? How does it feel? I tend I tend to look towards the next problem more than I look at the past success. Sure. Problem meaning challenge, not necessarily a negative connotation sure. there, but I agree with that. Um, but it feels it feels cool. It's cool. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very cool to have grown. And I mean, I just uh, a couple weeks ago sat down with the guys and we kind of like compared where the our operations are at compared to a year ago, and like, right. just looking at those things and realizing we are in a much better place than we were a year ago. Yeah, not that we were in a terrible place, but just improvement. It's right. cool to see improvement and growth. And to kind of take some time to recognize, like, we're on the right trajectory. Right. And if we just keep this up, if we keep looking for ways to improve, then, like, sky's the limit. Yeah. So it is It is very cool. The, the, the bigger space is a great blessing. I mean, it would have been... It was cramped with just two of us in the 500-square-foot building, right. but three of us would have been impossible. So the space is amazing. 
Um, it happened to be right by my house, so yeah. I go home for lunch, which is cool. It which makes me great. eat healthier too. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah, all around, all around, things are great right now, and we made some changes uh, going into this year that are gonna set up this year for even more success. Yeah. Which is uh, it's very exciting right now. What uh, and this is kind of piggybacking on that question because how has it felt not only expanding the business growing into a new space hiring some individuals but from the from the the, we wear multiple hats right yeah you know so you're a creative you're a business owner you're also now a manager yep you know and that people aspect comes into play so how with that new you know employees coming on like you said we got another one kind of coming in starting to run customer service side has the management skills within you obviously grown over time and and clearly the success shows that you're you're doing well at managing those people and setting expectations yeah, and all the yeah. and all it's, the quirkiness that comes along with that i would say the the biggest area of improvement but also the area where i realize still needs the most improvement is leadership sure um, people management so it's definitely been it's definitely been a journey i am and I think, I think this is why. I, I, for a solid year, worked by myself every day doing leather work. Yeah. Every day by myself. You yeah. Know, and I, whatever work needed done, I did it. Yeah. I never um, had to deal with complaints from myself. You know, it was just sure. a different thing. I was just yeah. grinding. Yeah. And so to have other people come in now, and there's also this, like, identity thing uh, um, um, having a business that you've built when you start when other people start putting their hands on that sure you go whoa yeah well get your hands on that's my baby yeah, yeah 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 but you have to it's just a trust thing it's it's education um, yeah I listen to a lot of leadership people management podcasts which hopefully are having some good effect on me um, seems like it just yeah it's it's definitely a lot it's you have to be able to separate to um your emotion from leadership like yeah. you have to be solution oriented otherwise it's just personal conflict right towards no goal right so you have to be able to remove emotion on both sides and like sometimes we have a lot i wouldn't call it conflict we have a lot of serious discussions me and the guys in yeah. the shop about all sorts of stuff and so and it every time we you know we try to have some takeaways from that but one thing that i've tried to do is in the midst of that just say just as a reminder we're all on the same team we're all headed the same direction we all have the same mission what we all want is exactly the same we want to succeed we want right. this company to succeed right. and just orienting everyone you know instead of facing each other and having conflict with each other we're just deciding. We know we want to go this direction. We're deciding what steps to take to get there. Yeah, uh, and that's just unity, which I think is a massive, a massive thing in an operation in any organization to have unity around what you're doing. Yeah. So. A mission statement, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah ultimately, like having that. I mean, and I and I say it this way too. But you know, from a from a freelancer to a client to an independent business owner to a client like setting expectations yep it goes no different for your employees right yeah yeah communication and, is, and that's is, the biggest thing it's massive and it's something i'm awful at yeah um and it's just a learning hard. it's a learning experience it really is to have to communicate and it's a personal development thing because you it won't it won't grow beyond you as an individual yeah like you have to you have to grow to meet that yeah it's a company and the last thing you want to be is the ceiling on your own yeah organization do you feel like you I'm sure you've gotten stronger and stronger at this over time, but do you feel like you used to shy away from certain conversations if oh, yeah. it was more an awkward situation or it wasn't the direction that you wanted something oh, to go yeah. or personalities? Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I would, I wouldn't, yeah. <laughs> I stayed away from conflict generally, yeah. but it was just a worse effect because all I would do is just not say anything and then it would build up and yeah. then it would come out other ways and it was yeah. stupid. Yeah. So, and I still fall into that sometimes. Um, and it's just, it's a lot of insecurities and stuff that you have to deal with. Uh, cause the last thing you want is the last thing you want is for you to be the one handling the conflict, right? It's not you. 
it's the company it's the mission it's the team sure and when it starts to become about your insecurity about everyone knowing that you're in charge right or your insecurity about um you know i i built this company how dare you make suggestions to improve it it's just yeah. it's a bunch of personal stuff that has to be dealt with put to the side yeah and then like team spirit unity and that's something we're still we're still working on yeah uh, and I'm still working on. Yeah. And trying to trying to improve as a as a leader. Um, I think that was your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. perfect <laughs> answer. Yeah, perfect answer. Because honestly, like that's, I'm I'm in the beginning phases of that yep. right now. I, I'm basically like where you started with Lost Dutchman as like the seven day work week, right? Solo yep. seven day work week. Just you got your day. You have your evenings. You can split off some time for fun and family, but for the most part, you're working. Yep. And I'm constantly working on edits after hours and doing all the things I can to keep the wheel moving. Um, and I'm finally getting to the point where I'm starting to need to bring on some additional people to like help grow. Yeah. yeah. Because there is a ceiling with what I do, and I and I know the same same for you, Very honestly. Much, like yeah. you can only produce so much on that term of supply and demand. And I definitely came to the realization recently that I have the bandwidth and I have the ability and the equipment and the space and all that to produce on a higher level for more clients and offer that to more clients. Yeah. But the downtime is I do have a newborn. I do have a wife. Yeah. And as much as she loves that I'm a, a good provider, she, she also, also loves when I'm dad and yeah. when I'm husband, yeah. right? So there's this big... This big moment where, okay, now I need to look at maybe the packages that I'm selling from either the subscription platform or like a la carte service stuff. Maybe I need to factor in the cost of the edit and have that to outsource. Yeah, yeah. And it's starting to get to that point where, you know, no different than upgrading equipment and building out certain things to help the production side of stuff it's no different now it's yeah. it's a it the people entity is almost just as a point is just as important as one of these cameras yep yep so i've learned kind of over time to be humble about certain things oh yeah and to understand that i can't do everything i try yeah and i've i've achieved some of it yeah but i've also failed a lot and i've been slow on certain deadlines because I just literally couldn't find the time yeah, or yeah. whatever the case, right? Yeah. So you the more you do it, the more you learn. And I feel like, you know, I've been watching you ever since really before we did the first podcast, but ever since obviously it's been more of a personal, you know, when I look at the Lost Dutchman or your personal like Instagram handle, it's cool to see you progressing through life and you're bringing on these new people and you're building a business and you seem happy i am yeah. like how's how's life like life as a whole right now is fantastic good it's fantastic um i i derive a lot of happiness and satisfaction from what i do yeah um which happens to be where i spend most of my day yeah. so if you can yeah. get happiness from where you spend most of your day i yeah. think that's a win and um and learn like growth to me is m more important than happiness um, or maybe it's just that growth makes me more happy but to be able to see like okay i'm improving i'm heading towards a version of this company a version of me as a leader that yeah. I'm, I'm happy with not yeah. necessarily i'm happy with who i am right now right i'm, I'm okay with it but right. i'm more happy knowing that i think the person that i'm heading towards becoming is somebody that i want to become yeah Versus the downside of that is, or the other, the flip side of that would be, would be seeing yourself not only lack growth, but, but de-evolve, which would be, I've never had that because, because also starting something like this, I mean, we've seen, let's see. So we were talking in 2022. Yeah. Um, so 2022, we were up 40% from 2021, 2023, we were up um 40 percent from 2022 and nice. even up to even 20 like it, it's always been growth yeah and so i think that's um that gives me so much satisfaction and joy just being able to grow as a thing and then that thing is also a vehicle for personal growth right so yeah it's life's great yeah that's awesome dude life yeah, is great that's awesome um i know you got a pup 
Dogs are incredible. Dogs are great. They make you happy every day. They endless unconditional love. He's Boone is Boone is great. He uh I've never seen a dog that wants food more than he wants food. <laughs> yeah. It's like no punishment. Yeah. No punishment will keep him away. Like it's worth it to him. Yeah. He yeah. knows what's coming. He yeah. knows he's yeah. going to get hit. Yeah. He's, he's yeah, going to yeah, get yeah, yeah. smacked. Yeah. And he just goes, "You know what? This egg up on the counter is worth it." <laughs> That's like, funny. Yeah. It's terrible, but uh, and I also I also am not as disciplined with him as i should be because he's so cute i, I know he but, is a very cute dog uh yeah but he's, he's also your shop dog right he's great he's kind he of hangs a out he hangs out with us he makes a lot of appearances on instagram yes yeah, he yeah. does he hangs out with us all day and barks at every single person that walks by the front of the shop yeah but yeah, yeah he's fun it's pretty much kind of a a brick and mortar location but you're not open to the public yeah, right yeah, it's, 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 a it's bit, definitely a production facility so to speak right it's a little bit confusing occasionally people will come in and not really know how to act or like what is this yeah um, yeah, yeah also we happen to have like right in the front door is a ping pong table so yeah, that just sure. throws people off even more but sure but yeah it is just a workshop yeah um we thought about maybe doing retail at some point in the future but right now we just don't need to yeah the sales are there yeah. online so and we need to, like, I would rather have more production space than a sure. retail space. Yeah. Well, it and sounds also, like you're moving in that direction, right? You, you yeah. mentioned you're going to be doing more belts, right, is the next yeah, big belts piece of is equipment the next, coming in. That's the next big product launch. And with it, a few pieces of equipment are going to be joining us. Yeah. So we're kind of, like, bringing those in. They're starting to come in. And then we're prototyping. And uh, we're going to be doing belts full swing by uh, end of February. Hopefully. Awesome. So, so soon. Yep. Yep. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of like R and D that goes into like making that decision, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. Now, we're in that process, in the prototyping process yeah. right now. So playing around with different hardware and different uh, leather colors. With there's so many there's so many little decisions to a belt. Yeah. That you don't even think about. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, I was I was going through a lot of stuff today prototyping and like getting sizing right because that's a big one too. They're going to be custom sized. Okay. Um, so we just have to really, we have to really succeed at, uh, communicating that, how to do that to the customer. Yeah. That way they don't just put in their, um, like waist size and yeah. So, but yeah, we, yeah we're going through all that. It's fun. It's exciting stuff. It's fun. I like product launches, um, which we don't do that many because I'm kind of, my mentality's always been like, do, do one thing really, really, really well before yep. you move on to more things. So, yep. Um, but we're at a point now where like the wallet operation has gotten to a level of efficiency that there's there's still some fine tuning, but it's not there's not much left right. to improve on that front. So now we're gonna start moving into other things and and um, belts are belts are coming. Belts are the next chapter. That's yep, cool. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. We'd kind of talked about you know certain things you'd played around with that that may not come into play like bags and stuff like that it really you know it, it from from the price point that you're at and the quality of leather that you're using is it really just not kind of worth your time given the market that you're kind of niched in i mean the edc it's, carry world for you is your your niche yeah yeah for sure um it's it's i don't want to just do things just because i can do them i'd rep because because everything is a sacrifice so if you if you choose to do one thing you're sacrificing somewhere right so i would rather just have that time yeah. and energy on the thing that we're doing right now super well yeah i would rather make however a set amount of money doing one thing yeah than 10 different things yeah because also i have to manage those 10 different things right. so like if we can just keep doing what we're doing and uh scale that and strategically add new things right then we're gonna do that but uh, there's guys out there that make anything that they can possibly make. Yeah. And they've got like hundreds of different products and kudos to them. Um, maybe I'm just not organized enough to be able to do that, but I would rather just But do you feel like them. they're they're actually making everything that's on their catalog or do you feel like that might be well, some, some yeah. rinse and repeat, you know, some buy people, wholesale and resale some type people situation? Some probably are doing that, but there are people also that I know that even in the leather field that are that are doing it all themselves really not themselves like them individually yeah yeah, but, yeah but that's that's their their game they have teams and they're just yeah 
I mean, I guess it's all in the in the word of growth. But I mean, even to your point too, last time we did an episode, I was kind of in the same boat. The moment that I decided to kind of really fully be, you know, I'm a professional content creator for a brand or a business from the independent business owner side of things. That's yeah. my like my deal. And then APA Custom Shop is my primary home for, you know, basically my day-to-day gig. Right. So I primarily make for them, and then I have my other, you know, offshoot things. But the moment that I decided to lean all the way into photo and video, and that's my specialty, Mm -hmm. it's incredible that, you know, the, lack of a better way to say this, the penny-pitching, you know, clients, the, you know, want it, want a lot for a little. Yep situation it disappeared the moment i started to specialize yeah, and yeah. and maybe there was a point where i probably shouldn't have been saying no to certain projects you know given like financial situations yeah. and things like that yeah but in turn it, it allowed me to focus more and then the next client came in and it was exactly what i wanted to be yep. doing and it yep. was at the price point that i needed and and it started this flow to where I am where I am now. And to the same point, too, it's just, I don't know, when you decide to specialize in something and you decide to, like, really refine your skills and hone in yep. and kind of block out because I've done web development. I've done, you know, I'm a musician still. That's not totally out of the out of the scheme of things. But, I mean, to focus on video strategically yeah, and yeah. to make that my jam, it started to click it started to make sense it started to like i started to actually enjoy it more because taking a client call being a jack of all trades you honestly don't sound like you're an expert in anything Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. even though i'm good at all these different things like you don't come across that way on that call you you come across like a swindler or yeah yeah. you know somebody who's just trying certain clients because you want to specialize in a certain way yeah yeah i mean it's yeah a, in, in your it's situation a, a you have to have trust that those clients are are down the road right. for me it was easier because we were i was just there was too much of right. the normal stuff right. getting sold that i was just like no right i, I don't want to do any custom work ever right so right. i just i said no and i'm really good at saying no now yeah yeah um, <laughs> i don't say yes to much yeah because i just man it's when you can apply energy to one thing and you're doing, I mean, we're doing 350 units a week. Yeah, that's awesome. Actually, 350 orders a week, which is more like 450 units. Yeah. Um, you get really good. Yeah. You get really good at doing that. Yeah. Really proficient. Yeah. And if we were trying to do 10 different things or, or even five different things, especially with the, you know, the crew I have now, yeah. uh, it would just be a nightmare. I can't yeah, imagine. Chaos. So the, the goal now is to add different products and then hire new people, kind of put them in the old slots and move people into the new uh, products, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, we yeah. have like, there's almost like a hierarchy, hierarchy of skills um, from like, cutting and um stitching some of the easier stuff to more and more skill more and more time required to learn the skill so we're kind of moving people up that increasing their skill set yeah and then bringing people in starting the same position so right. i'm at the top of that right now and the next move for me is to start to get out of production a little bit yeah so that i can do more uh visionary type things yeah r&d and yeah run the business a little bit more. exactly right. exactly which uh right now is done either by hurting production yeah when i take time yeah. or it's just done after hours so yeah it's trying to set aside some time like dedicated time in the week where i can run the business who uh who do you use as a sounding board the guys in the shop honestly ben has been here long enough to where he knows the processes um, almost all of them as well as I do. So he, uh, he offers a lot of really good insight. Um, and Nate does as well, honestly. Um, we have a lot of group discussions about stuff. 
Yeah. And I'm learning how to listen to other people's opinions more yeah. than I uh, am used to. Sure. Because I was the only one with opinions for a while. Yeah. And I followed all of them. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. 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 Letting other you couldn't do wrong. Yeah. No, of course not. Yeah. I think I got. I think I hurt myself because I got lucky with a lot of the decisions that I made. Yeah. And it turned out really well. Sure. But that doesn't necessarily mean that all of my decision making is incredible. Right. I kind of got lucky with a few things, and now you know it built up this kind of false confidence in in my opinions, but. But so we have we have a lot of team discussions. We have a lot of group discussions. Um, I try to get as much leadership input as I can. Uh, a lot of great podcasts out there, audio books, whatever I can. Yeah, and kind of virtual soundboards. Who's uh, who's your favorite like business forward podcast right now? Oof. Like I'm sure you probably like come across Gary V. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's another good one? The popular guy right now is Alex Hermosi. Um, that's a good one. I, I So you know what's funny is this may not be necessarily like a business forward one, um, but uh, uh, Jay Shetty, mm-hmm. um, I forget the actual name of the podcast. What is it? On Purpose? I think it's On yeah, Purpose yeah, is yeah. the actual podcast name, but right. with, with Jay Shetty. And I, I find obviously his demeanor is soothing yeah. in a way because of just his monk background but the guests that he has on the conversations that he has with them the thought provoking nature of them i love that podcast nice, it's yeah. probably one of my favorites and it does talk about business especially depending on the guest uh but for a lot of times it does touch on like you know where you're at spiritually where you're at mentally yeah, yeah. how you find clarity how you find you know, peace in kind of a chaotic world. You know, I know in past conversations, you've got a, a nice relationship with faith, yeah. spirituality. That's definitely a vibe. Um, you know, I know that's still probably a heavy element for you. But for sure, yeah. As far as, you know, do you share that with your team? Do you share that with, you know, obviously you share it with your family, but what is that relationship like? for you at this point in your life? Great question. Yeah, so um, my guys are both Christian as well, as okay. I am, uh, people of faith. And um, in fact, I know them only through church back in my childhood days yeah, uh, back cool. in Ohio. So yeah. so yeah, we all share that faith, and we do try to follow a biblical code, if I can say that, um, and how we do business. Sure. Uh, we try to keep that as, like, we try to derive our values and how we interact and behave and how we treat people um, from the Christian ethic. Yeah. Uh, so, and then personally, I mean, my faith is, my faith is everything to me. Uh, I mean, it's the foundation. It's the foundation. It's why I'm, I can be happy and why I can be peaceful. Yeah. And satisfied is, uh, it's through Christ. So... And then uh, if, you know, faith I view as kind of like a foundation and an umbrella. Uh, A lot of people talk about faith as like they have their business and they have this and they have this and then they have their faith. Yeah. And I don't view it as that. I view it as faith is the thing in all of those. That's the foundation and the umbrella of all of those things. And so my faith is that for me. Yeah. Um, And it's faith. It's faith that God has a plan. Yeah. It's faith that I am recognized by the creator of the universe. Yeah. Uh, it's faith that if I do things uh, according to scripture and if I do things according to my conscience and the spirit, that that is the best way to go. Yeah. Even when it feels like it's not. Sure. Even when it would feel better not to have the morals and yeah. the, the value structure. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's incredibly, it's incredibly important to me and I'm, and I feel blessed that I can share that with the team. Um, I don't think I'm going to make some rule that I'll only hire Christians going forward. Sure. Right, right, right. Um, so how we would interact and that's a future issue to, to deal with. But, uh, for now it's, I definitely want to build a workplace that doesn't shy away from that Yeah. and that people aren't scared to talk about those type of things. I mean, it's not. I feel like it is always kind of a touchy subject for people. And I feel like it's like a lot of people look at it as bringing it into the workplace as like taboo in certain ways. Um, 
I disagree with that too. I, I feel like at some point, especially if you're 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 running your own business, you're running your own plan, yeah, you're yeah. creating something with your own hands, especially. Like there's got to be some self reflective moments, and especially running a business, you know, good karma goes full circle. It it might be a hard decision to do something a certain way, but in the end of the day, you know it's the right way to do things. Mm-hmm. So growing pains come into play with certain decisions like that based on moral codes yeah no there's not been a a massive decision that like is you know a, a really is we're turning away that? millions yeah. of dollars because we're following our values yeah, yeah, yeah um but it's more than just the the day-to-day so how we interface with our customer sure faith comes into that because we want to treat people like christ would treat people sure uh we want to show them love and kindness and respect and then and so we interface with each other um, as a team, we also want to do that, have right. that same kindness and spirit. So, um, and as far as like future team members coming in, as far as what the, how they should behave within the business, it's still going to be guided by those values. Sure. Um, the values are derived from scripture, but then again, you know, I'm not going to say that we would never hire someone who doesn't share the same faith as us. They just have to have the basic values that used to be, I mean, across the board, humanity accepted a lot of these values which is just honesty kindness you know those type of things so right right yeah that's how that's how we'll handle it going forward but as far as as far as some pivotal moment where we chose values over money we haven't really had to do that i don't think yeah at this point yeah i mean it's it's cool to hear that like you've you've got your your you know so well i don't know how how you would consider them, but maybe, maybe call them best friends that are yeah. now your employees. Like to me, I, I, you know, all my friends, unfortunately, my best friends are spread out across the United States. So I have, you know, healthy, like zoom cocktail hours. Uh, okay. I have like, you know, digital time yeah. to hang out with them, but to think of, you know, bringing someone into this world that I've created and sharing that, I feel like you probably do in the sense of like, it's my baby. I like things done a certain way, you know, not to say I'm totally OCD, but it's definitely an issue for me. Um, But you know, the way I offload, the way I do folder structures on a drive, the way all of that goes is very specific. Yeah. I mean, you have your thumb on every little area of the business. Right. And it's really difficult to imagine because the immediate thought in your your like survival mind is they're gonna do it and they're gonna screw it up and the sure. business is ruined yeah right because yeah, yeah. there's also i don't know if you have this but there's kind of this imposter syndrome whatever you want to call it of like i shouldn't even have this business sure. like i'm not that i'm not a good i'm not that good of a business person right. like what am i doing with this money yeah and then like so you already have kind of coming in like this business i shouldn't even have it like and then you in, you enter in a little bit of uh, instability of like it could go away at any time, and yeah. it gets you in a really defensive state if you're yeah. not careful. Yeah, it's it's tough, but you'll yeah you'll. you'll well, it, it seems like it seems like the you know the friends that you have brought into the business respect it and understand yeah, like yeah. what you've built up to that point to when they came in. It wasn't just like my homie's going to hook me up with a job. It was, no, no, they took it seriously as a a career. I tried to set expectations uh, as much as I could. Um, But I mean, even like Ben joined us in July of 2022. I think that's right. Yeah. Yep. Um, And even then, even then, you know, he took a risk moving across the country to work for me. Um, And I guess that. Oh, so he wasn't local when, you hired him on he actually did make the move out yeah yeah. so i knew these these guys back in ohio which is where we were from uh we moved out here 2017 yeah um so we had kept loose touch since then um it was one of those things where like you could always pick back up you know sure that that friendship so yeah but yeah he definitely he took a risk coming out here um i guess he just believed in it enough to and didn't have a direction where he currently was that competed enough with this so he came out here and uh and it leveled me up i'll tell you that that's awesome having somebody that's relying on you and decisions that you make and a thing that you're building uh for their income 
Right. And at that time, he had a serious girlfriend. Uh, they're engaged now. Awesome. So uh, yeah, it's a whole other. It, it was a whole other level of him coming in because the guy before that was great, um, but he was uh, seventeen when sixteen or seventeen at, when he worked for me, and he wanted to do other things. And I knew that you know as he came and joined me, mm-hmm. uh, and it was just kind of like a. He lived with his mom still, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, but having somebody, an independent guy, come in that's like going to make a life, and you're like, I have to provide the life. Right. You know, this thing has to provide the life. I can't right. screw this up. It, uh, it took me and the business to another level. And I think every, every employee that comes in in the future is going to do that even, even yeah. more. I mean, I felt that when Nate came in, too. Because, um, again, he, he moved from... Ohio as well. Yeah. So, took a risk. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm trying to repay that risk by providing a right. career path. Right. Which is awesome. I mean, that's such a cool thing. If we can build this to where these guys can be here, you know, for an indefinite amount of time yeah. and feel like they have a career and can make a living. Um, it's so cool. I know, uh, I know we've kind of always talked about you know, how you got this started, it was definitely more along the lines of like a hobby at first that, you know, just kind of became a profession, but like you zoom out a little bit. Does it, does it still like blow you away that like you are Nate of Lost Dutchman Leather and it's as successful as it is. And this is your life now. Cause to me, building your own business, extremely rewarding, scary, uh, you know, sometimes frustrating. Yep. Sometimes you want to throw in the towel altogether, just screw it i'll work for some other nine to five and let all you know the the ceo and the the gm or whoever's in charge like let them have all the stress and i'll just punch a clock yep you know does obviously you probably had those moments in the early years of starting this especially if it got like overwhelming at times yeah but zooming out like i'm saying like how does that feel like do, do you feel like like I know you said you were growing into the guy that you're kind of wanting to be or that you see as you want to be, and yeah. that's awesome. How does that feel like looking at yourself now, being successful, having gone through some of the bumps in the road? That's that's pretty huge. But you seem happy, you seem healthy, yeah, yeah. you seem it's a good it's a good fairly question. stress free. It's a good question. Um yeah, I wouldn't say I'm stressed too much. I'm, it's an optimistic view. It's an optimistic view. Definitely less stress than when, um, you know, we were at a point where, like, can we ever get beyond this? Yeah. The worst feeling in the world is to feel like there's a wall in front of the path that you're headed, yeah. and you can't get around the wall. Yeah. And you're just like, how do we scale? And and scaling something that's as skill oriented as leather work. Sure. Um, seemed impossible several times. Yeah. In the past few years. And then you find a way to do it. Yeah. And a lot of that is just seeing that there's there's companies out there that are doing it. Right. So we can do it. Right. If they did it. We can do it. Yeah. And just believing in that. But then, like, then you do something where that, that wall starts to crumble and you go, okay, there's the path. There's yeah. the path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right now, going into 2024, I see a very clear path um, to some some really big goals. Yeah. And so that excites me. And that's not stressful at all. Because I feel like, at least now we're at a point where even if we don't grow by the end of the year, um, or this year over last year, we're still in a good place. Like we did well enough in 2023 that I'm not like, yeah, it's not like we're going out of business if we don't right. grow compared to that. Um, but so that being said, I'm viewing 2024 very optimistically, right? Um, rather than like a survival mindset, it's right. more of like a, I don't know what you'd call it. I mean, I, I would say you're you're kind of in like a you're in the machine, like for lack of a better way to put it. Like it's right, it's, a, right. it's a moving component we've at built, this point. We've built this now. We just have to feed it. Right. And yeah. And the numbers, when you kind of look at it this way, like year over year, you've added a, a you know an employee. Now you're adding another. That offsets the cost and gains because now you're you know you're providing employees salary right. or or hourly wages, and that comes into play too because the number 
of like at the end of the year what you actually earned might look the same as 2023 but you brought on another person yeah, and, yeah. and your and your ability to produce that much more it, yeah, is if exponentially we can, growing if we can get more units out there that's an investment yeah i mean i've always i've always believed that that if we can get the work out there mm-hmm. if we can invest by just putting our product in people's hands yeah that that's gonna that's gonna come back in yeah. big ways and it has yeah it has already so but yeah, that being said, we are looking really, really good for yeah, this year. Good. We should land everything good. Uh, higher than last year. So that's awesome. It's very cool. Yeah. As far as uh, personal personal goals, um, I mean, work is work, but you know, where are you at personally? Like, what what's uh, what's something that we can look forward to on on your personal channel to like look for? What are we What are we doing? <sighs> Getting that forerunner back and running. Yeah, is that the goal? <laughs> Looks like I'm it's gonna have to make hard, some phone it's calls. It's not a hard set goal, but man, I would love to have have that thing. I know you yeah. loved it. I mean, the last time that I saw it, I don't know up, why I, I like, love it so much. People, it's don't a great get truck. It, but it's a great man, truck. I love that. That truck. that that gen of Forerunner is classic. It's the the square body, a little bit more like the Land Cruiser. Yeah. It's the man. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's You're gonna have to truck. get it back. You can I'm tell you want it. it back. Yeah, that's. We'll I think we just. I think we just locked that goal in for you. And yeah, I think we did. We did pour some cement on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's solid. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm paying off the house. That's yeah. still kind of a finance related goal, but yeah. Um, that's right. You bought a bought a home this a house, last year. Twenty twenty two. End of twenty twenty two. Okay, cool. So probably just shortly after we had our first okay. episode. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Several months. After yeah. That, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, that was a big thing. Yeah, moved out of the apartment and um, and now actually Nate is um, my roommate, so he oh, rents cool. out a room in the house, um, nice. which Ben did before. He moved into an apartment in uh, July or August. Nice. Uh, so yeah, it's and Ben uh, Ben is the employee with the girlfriend who is correct. coming on as customer service. Yeah, so oriented. she's doing off site right now. She actually lives in uh, Idaho. Oh, cool. Um, what part? Uh, round Boise. Okay. Yep. So Meridian, southern, end, southern end. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So uh, she's doing off-site uh, customer service just on the Facebook and Instagram channels. Cool. For now. Yeah. And then the goal is to put her as a full customer service agent when they get married and she moves down here. So nice. Yeah, that'll be great. That'll Ben does it right now, uh, and he's great at it. But that'll free him up to have full-time production because right now he splits his time. He does emails in the morning and then production after he gets the emails cleared out so having him fully on production i think will be really cool is that is that kind of the way that the shop kind of works especially between you and the other guys is obviously everybody wears multiple hats but you know everybody's on the production side and yeah. everybody else does like kind of a little bit of admin it seems like um uh ben yeah ben does the customer service nate doesn't really do any admin at this point just because he's not been here that long yeah um i'm sure we'll we'll shift towards something like that in the future but um but yeah yeah so we have a pretty detailed production schedule yeah different tasks we went through me and ben before nate joined us we actually got like an airbnb in uh prescott and um sat down and figured it all out we went through a lot of stuff it was a really productive time um but one of the main things we did was figure out how to make three people uh, how to how to coordinate three people doing so many different tasks yeah. so that it all lines up, and we're we're smooth right now. Yeah, we're smooth. It seems like it. It's awesome. Yeah, it's cool to see. Um, and obviously, like Nate's learning skills and getting faster at that, and then we're gonna be training him in in kind of the more high level skills. Yeah, and um, keep growing that way. That's that's the game plan. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, it seems like the products just higher and higher quality and that's the biggest the people in place are doing a great job that's the biggest thing is just not losing the quality i mean that would be i mean if you want to talk about kind of like a values decision sure. that's one that's always there which yeah. is we don't sacrifice the quality yeah um which we easily could yeah you know we easily could have yeah. these maids anywhere yeah but we're really dedicated to american craftsmanship yeah um we're dedicated to a high quality product and a high quality experience so we don't outsource customer service. We don't outsource any of the production. Um, and that is a value decision. So the product then, the product then um, gains the, reaps the benefit from that. That's awesome. But yeah, yeah. 
what uh, what can we look for? I mean, I know you've got like your catalog of, of you know, certain wallets that you are stapled to in, in your catalog as yep. far as new stuff coming into that pretty much staple at this point and just kind of changing up the, the leathers used. and Yeah, so the wa- the wallet lineup I feel like is in a really good place. Yeah. I don't want to make an infinite an infinite number of wallet models, I think. We're and, and correct me because I, I, I obviously don't know other than from watching like your YouTube stuff and, and like kind of the tutorial type stuff you do for Instagram and whatnot, yeah, yeah. which I love. Um, I mean, you've got like certain templates that you use. I know you have a stamp for like basically certain cuts, right? So yep, you're, yep. you're cutting out bulk in a certain shape and yeah. then it's sanding, stitching, going through the motions with everything. Yeah. So I'll try to make this as yeah, uh, simple as, pre- as I yeah. can, but we have... A group of products that we just call our glued products because they have to get glued. Yeah. Um, but those are the standard like pancake style, um, pancake style construction. Okay. Um, so we kind of segment that off as one group of products, and then we have the most popular products are the Finnegan yeah. family of products. So you have yeah. the Finnegan, the Big Fin, uh, Thin Fin, Cash Fin. Those are all the same. They don't require any gluing. Okay. Um, so right there you have two segments. Um, so we have. How do I want to? How do I want to walk you through this? Can I just walk you through like a uh, we call it day one, day two? Absolutely, okay. yeah. So every two days, we do a batch of a hundred orders. Okay. Um, so day one, we're coming into the shop. Two people are on cutting. That's me and Nate are on cutting. So we are taking our clicker presses, hydraulic clicker presses, and we are cutting out all the shapes for each wallet. So we're okay. going through the order list. And we're uh, kind of batching by color and product, but trying to do it as efficiently as possible. But they are still all custom made to order. So yeah. uh, me and Nate are doing that. Ben's on emails. Um, we usually finish cutting. We, we try to start cutting by 9, usually done by 10 or a little after. Um, and then the glued products get dropped off at Ben's station because he's going to glue those. He's going to sand those. Uh, he's going to bevel the edges so they yep. don't have sharp corners. Sure. Uh, and that's going to be his job for the next few hours. Yeah. And then me and Nate are working on the Finnegan stuff. So we have to logo it with the heat stamp. We have to monogram custom initials if the customer requested it. Uh, we have to burnish the edges, make them nice and shiny, smooth, no fray or anything. Um, so we're doing that. And then after that point, it's pretty much all stitching. Yeah. So Ben has glued those products. They're ready for stitching. Uh, the fitting and stuff is ready for stitching. And then we're stitching from like noon on a day one all the way till noon or after on a day two. And then after that, it's just finishing stuff up. We're um, burnishing the edges on the glued stuff. We are stamping logos on the glued stuff because that gets done after. Um, we are, what else are we doing? Just the, all the finishing towards all the way through packaging. Yeah. So, and then we normally finish a day two sometime in the afternoon. And then... Is it all hands on deck for packaging? Uh, no, I don't do packaging. Yeah, I'm you're a, out on I'm that one. I love that now. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. They invent, <laughs> they invent do that. Um, yeah, yeah. Although packaging is a... You have to know every product and every color. Sure. And every thread color. Sure. Um, and check the monogram and all of that to be able to pull the product. We have, you know, bins, but it's a hundred products there. Yeah. So you have to be able to, you know, know all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So there is, there is a level of skill even in and that. And then walk me through it. I'm, you know, and this is probably boring to some. It's interesting to me because I've been in the retail space before. So when you're, you're packaging this stuff, are we, you know, let's say I'm expecting a lost Dutchman wallet. Is it coming in a cardboard box? Is it coming in like a soft pack? Is it coming in? What, how do, yeah, how do you receive have, a, a Lost Dutchman wallet? We have cardboard boxes with our logo on the front. Um, I think they look pretty pretty clean. And then the product itself is in a cloth bag on the inside. Oh, clean. Um, a couple business cards in there. Like that. Postcards um, when we have them in stock. And uh, what else is in there? The packing slip. And then sometimes stickers. Nice. When we want to. Nice. Yeah. And the postcard, is that, you know, is that ever offering like upsales or discounts on your next purchase no. type of thing? Or is it just strictly no, informational? No, just, normally it just says, we're still working for uh, through a couple different designs, but uh, the ones we've been doing just say, thank you for supporting American Craftsmanship. And then um, a little statement about if they post on Instagram, we'll repost their yeah. story basically. So, nice. Cool. Yeah. 
And I mean, that, that, I mean, same thing with the EDC stuff. I mean, you're pretty much probably constantly getting trickled videos and reels and posts of different people using your product, enjoying yeah. the product. That still probably feels pretty cool to see that kind yeah, of recognition yeah. very on a, cool. on a regular basis. Cool. Yeah, yeah. What, uh, I mean, as far as for you, you know, favorite creators that are out there. Ooh. I mean, it doesn't have to be specific to leather work or anything, yeah, yeah. but favorite creators that are kind of keeping you inspired. <sighs> Great question. Um, so in the leather work realm, there's a guy named Ryan with Little King Goods. Mm-hmm. On the videography front, unbelievable. I think you'd love him. Yeah. You got to look him up. Um, yeah, he's a he's really big on YouTube now, which is really cool. He's hit a stride there. Um, really, really cool ASMR stuff. Just really cleanly shot. Yeah. So I look up to him. I mean, he's doing he's doing a lot of stuff. Um, really high quality. I wish that I had the the time and energy to dedicate towards YouTube stuff. Yeah. For now, that's YouTube is not. I mean, YouTube for us is never going to be the main thing. It's his main thing. And, yeah. You know, you can see that. Yeah. Um, but he's yeah he's great. Uh, I've been watching a lot of woodworking. Okay. On YouTube, I don't know how I fell into that rabbit hole, but I'll well, sit I down remember, and watch that. Well, I remember. I remember back in the day, you said your brother and your father were big woodworkers, yeah. right? Yeah. So I mean, it, it, probably a little bit from your history with that. Yeah, yeah. I, it was probably just a month ago that I I sat down and watched like a forty five minute build of a you know a epoxy table or something. And yeah. I, I've been watching yeah. those a lot. Uh, there's a guy named uh, Four Eyes Furniture. Okay. Uh, he's really big on YouTube, a woodworker. Well, I mean, you said you, you were, you're making your own tables at the shop, too. Really so, I mean, basic. Just yeah, but, but I mean, really, when you break it down, woodwork, making furniture, yeah, especially hands work on stuff. tables, hands-on hands on stuff, stuff is, is, is really cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm um, still loving that. What, uh, let's pivot. What music is playing in your shop on a daily, or is it mostly like a podcast <laughs> environment? Um, so we have kind of made a group decision that we don't play much on the group speakers because we have very different tastes among okay. the guys. Okay. And you know, the music that you don't like having to hear it can put you in a bad mood. Sure. So, uh, it's mostly headphones or, or earbuds in for most of the day. Okay. Um, so for me personally, it's a lot of podcasts, okay. audio books. Um, yeah, I have podcasts that are kind of, I try to hit like different subjects. Um, sure. so like a fitness podcast, yeah. uh, like philosophy podcast and then like more business mostly business stuff but uh then audiobooks i've been uh listening to a lot of simon sinek okay i love him he's yeah. great yeah so on that front that's what i'm listening to but then on the speakers if we do listen to anything it's just like uh like lo-fi or jazz or lo-fi jazz nice which is yeah, its yeah. Own thing. that's a vibe um uh, yeah just kind of background chill yeah chill yeah, yeah. Music. yeah cool not that i don't like them but I haven't really gotten into audiobooks. Oh, yeah? Like listening to, I mean, I guess I love podcasts, so I guess it's not too far off from that. But I mean, it requires a little bit more attention. Yeah. I, I still, I sometimes will drift off and like realize I haven't listened to the last minute. I've got yeah. my own thoughts going on. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll try to like rewind and find where my attention left. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, it does require a little bit more. So I don't do podcasts I could listen to all day. Yeah. And I guess it's just because it's more conversational, but audiobooks definitely, you have to be like focused a little bit more. You I mentioned say. Simon Sinek, I, which I love the, I think it's the power of why or find start your with why, why or start, start with, with why. why yeah. yeah. I, that's uh previous life in HR departments, I was a recruiter for a company back in the day and I was kind of like a staple. Like we would always make people watch that. Gotcha. Yeah. It was like a great, like it was a great sit down, you know, here's, here's our mission statement. Here's, you know, here is our why Yep. and watch this and make the connection to what we're trying to communicate. Yeah. Here. Yeah. yeah. Two years uh, ago, big, I would have considered deal. that stuff like fluff. Yeah. Like I was like, let's just do the work yeah you know? yeah, yeah, yeah i didn't care at all but as team members come in as we have to be united um right. that stuff is way more important to yeah me. yeah he's, because he's you a great know speaker. you know kind of internally why you're doing what you're doing right but to have to tell other people here's why we're doing what we're doing as a team yeah, yeah. it's a whole nother thing yeah you know to have to voice that and and it's important so yeah. i've that's one thing i've grown a lot in is is listening with an open mind to that kind of stuff that 
uh, is not just here's ways to increase your conversion rate or increase your efficiency. It's like right. a little bit, you know, zoomed out a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but it's it's crucial. I think that's the the coolest part for me is growing business and you know I, I'm I'm doing my independent thing, but I'm also a part of a bigger picture with the building that we're in. Right. And it's very interesting when you know direction and it starts to be kind of i guess like you were saying with you know having to having to listen to certain perspectives that you never had to listen to before Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um that's a big thing um also being in a situation where i'm not i'm not the head leader of the bigger piece that i'm a part of right so having having the foresight to know when to bite my tongue Mm -hmm, or to mm -hmm. not make a suggestion or to be okay if a suggestion that I made is not taken or used. Right. Right. Um, and you know, we all do things differently and especially as you grow and you start to understand business and how to run efficiently and what could be done differently. It's hard to communicate that to a group. It is very difficult like we talked about in the beginning of this it's like communication is not a strong suit for me like you said it's a growing thing that you deal with every day i i would say that like the community communication aspect of of you know even down to it even with even with clients that i work with it's understanding something that they may not understand and explaining it correctly so i find myself being part teacher Mm-hmm. Um, especially with the social media world that we're yeah, in yeah. and the difference between a reel and a story and a post. Yeah, They're yeah. all different things and they all have different purposes. And if you use them correctly, you'll be successful with them in their own right. But to explain the difference right, to right. someone who really doesn't get it, yeah, it's almost like a completely different language and you don't see it click. Right. It's right. incredibly hard to communicate some of these things. Yeah. So I, I come back to it like communication is key, being a part of something and being able to communicate efficiently to them and keep the ship running smooth and being able to answer the questions. Yeah. Have the hard conversations. Seems like you're doing a great job at that with your crew. And I'm trying. I'm yeah. trying. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely still an area of improvement. Um, but the yeah, I think the biggest thing is being united and realizing that we're not enemies fighting about stuff. Right. We are a team trying to figure out how to conquer this next thing. Yeah. And, you know, we'll hear all the solutions. At the end of the day, I have to bear the weight of any decision that's made. Yeah. Um, That's the responsibility that comes with being in charge. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of the solutions come down to me. Um, my responsibility then to, to them, to team members is simply to actually let them have the voice and the solution Yeah. rather than just, here's the solution. This is what we're doing. I'm the boss. Um, which is tough because it's hard to, it's hard when you think you're right and you think you have the solution. It's really hard to give that to someone else. Yeah. But it's, it's probably just pride. It's pride yeah. that gets in the way, yeah. like everything. Um, so it's, it's an area of growth. And then, yeah, as far as uncomfortable conversations go, that's probably one of my weakest, weakest areas. Uh, I don't like confrontation. And not that my guys make me have to have these conversations often. They don't. Right. They're great. Um, but people are people, and conversations have to occur like that. And it's definitely something that... I have to get better at. I think the key with those is to make sure that the other person feels knows that you know that it's uncomfortable. Right. Like I don't want to I don't want to have this conversation. Yeah. You know, you can just right. say that. Right. I don't want to have this conversation. I right. feel like I have to. Right. I feel like I have to cuz this has to change or whatever. And um and if all goes well, you walk away respecting each other still and or more and having taking a step in the right direction as far as solving the whatever problem brought it up nice i'm gonna i'm gonna lead us into wrapping this up i'm gonna take a a play out of the jay shetty book here um we're gonna ask a couple of questions and wrap up the episode on those questions so first question um and this could be business related this could be personal 
whatever you decide, your answer is your answer. If you could change one thing today, what would it be? About yourself, business, or otherwise? Oof. I want to get really, part of me wants to get really philosophical, part of me wants to get really tactical. Those are the two sides of me. Um, change one thing today. I mean, it would be about myself, partially because of the business, but I would, can it be a big thing? It can be a huge <laughs> thing if you want it to be, yeah. I would make me better at people skills. Because that is the future of the company is more people. Yeah. I mean, growth is happening with more people. Yeah. For an indefinite amount of time. Yeah. And so I definitely need to work on people skills. If I could just snap my fingers and have that, um, I would do it. I would do that. Um, yeah, that, there you go. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, second question. Uh, and this one is almost verbatim of a Jay Shetty. But if you could create one law that everybody has to abide by, what would it be? Create one law. Ugh, that's tough. I believe in small government. <laughs> um, it's tough. It's really... It's a tough question. It's tough. It's Because, again, you could, go, you could go from very personal perspective or you could zoom out to a very philosophical what would the world yeah. need so right it's a tough right question. what do i want what does the world need um oh man that's really tough because i i want to say something like i want to say something we already have those laws i like freedom yeah i like voicing opinions i like debate that's there's an independent rebel in me for sure sure that uh that drives that um so um and this is kind of not an answer to your question i'm sorry but i think that uh the law the law would just be that that never gets that that never gets gets suppressed okay that creativity freedom of ideas that never gets suppressed we kind of already have a law but to be fair doesn't necessarily have to be governmental legislative there's there can be a social suppressing of yeah. creativity and debate so i would say that sounds like a really cop out to your question no i i dude i i understand because you know the baseline of it is it's it's general freedom of speech yeah. general freedom of creativity and, you know, I hate to say it, but we live in a world of keyboard warriors. So, yeah. you know, even based on your answer, you know, in the comments of the YouTube video or whatever, like we may get someone who disagrees, yeah. right? Or yeah. says something else. So that basically kind of puts us in the world we're in. We're in a very, you know, everybody has an opinion. Everybody also likes to point fingers and yeah, yeah. and shut people's opinions down just because yeah, they can yeah. and it's an option and the freedom of speech to do that is there. Yeah. So I understand it's like here's, if it wasn't something that would way get to, shut here's down. A, here's a better way to phrase it. My law would be that people get to live with as few laws as possible. There you go. Whether social or governmental. Nice. I like yeah. that. The least amount of laws to protect. Well, I want to I want to thank you again for coming on. I want yeah. to thank you for doing this. It's always fun to talk to you. No, thanks for having me. It's fun. Yeah. It's we, good to, I don't normally talk um, this much about these types of things. Yeah. So it's yeah, fun. It's yeah. good. Well, and, and you were one of my favorite episodes when I was kind of trying to tackle the beginning stages of the podcast. It was very organic how we connected. It was very organic throughout the conversation. I was honestly very nervous about the first episode because yeah. that was my you were my first guest in that platform right right so you know i remember having like these like little bullet point lists on my phone and you know and there's parts of that too from the communication side where it's i didn't feel like i was giving you a hundred percent of me and my mm. focus because i had all the things that i was worried about right right and now i've kind of built this to the point where it's An designed to just sit do down and talk. Yeah. yeah. And there's and there's less structure to that. But uh, genuinely wishing you absolutely the most incredible 2024. Uh, the business seems like it's going great, but to 
many, many more growths and, yep, and yep. you know, triumphs over time. Let us know where, where can we find you? Where can we look up the product? Where, where, where are you at? Uh, we're on Instagram at Lost Dutchman Leather. Uh, we are on YouTube. We're trying to make a little bit more YouTube content. Uh, maybe a video a month or two videos a month, something nice. like that. So, nice. um, that's out at Lost Dutchman Leather on YouTube. Um, and then the website's just lostdutchmanleather.com. Nice. Well, you heard it here, folks. We got Nate from Lost Dutchman Leather. Um, again, thank you guys for watching. Um, these are an interview series that we're going to start doing. Um, making this more organic. Um, I hope you guys really enjoy it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, anything else you want to add? I don't think so. I think we covered it all. I think all. we got it. All right. Hey, thanks a lot, brother. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah.